Welcome everyone. This is Explore State Government Careers, Session 2, Opportunities Within All of the Agencies. Today is February 14th, 2022. I'm Liz Jennings, host of the uh, webinar today, and I'm so glad to have all of you here today. This series during uh, these four weeks in February is an overview on some of the details that you need to know and that you're curious about for getting hired within the state of Minnesota. Um, these four weeks, last week was an overview of the Minnesota careers page, mn.gov slash careers. Today, we're going a little bit deeper into a couple of opportunities within specific agencies that have entry points for um, people of all work levels, histories, backgrounds. Next week, we're going to be talking a little bit about some of the intricacies, you know, now what, you know, what happens after you apply. And then on February 28th, we will have an online meet and chat, kind of like a job fair, online job fair with different software. And at the end of the recording here, I will put that link so that you can start to build your profile. It really only takes about 15 minutes. You know, working for the state government, um, there are some benefits to it and, and some unique considerations. We are the largest or the second largest competing with Mayo um, for the number of people that we employ in the state of Minnesota. Right now, this winter, there have been over 500 job openings at any given time. There are 2,000 different job classes. Positions can range from entry level, temporary, part time to executive level in just about every single career field. And the positions really carry a purpose and a sense of mission and offer competitive benefits. You know, some of the uh, people that I've been, I'm having on all of these uh, conversations are only a very small part of all of the agencies, councils, and boards that are indeed hiring. So um, maybe you do or don't know, know it, but the Minnesota Zoo in Apple Valley is a state agency. Uh, Department of Military Affairs, Department of Natural Resources, who will be on the call today, Pollution Control Agency, Department of Education, the Minnesota Historical Society, all of Minnesota State Colleges and Community Colleges, um, Secretary of State, Explore Minnesota, our Tourism Board, they're all um, part of the state system. So I have seen jobs that range from radio repair person and audio visual editing, video editing to, um, you know, lead attorneys. So there's really a, something um, available for any part of your career. Benefits, um, oftentimes people know some of these things, but there is vacation, sick and paid holidays, 11 paid holidays, a comprehensive health, dental, life insurance, and optional insurance that's available, retirement plans, and employee assistance programs. So those are some of the, you know, the, the perks, you could say, the benefits um, when you get hired here. So this is um, the information. Where do you go? Go to mn.gov slash careers, and that will be the state uh, main portal for finding out about jobs. And then careers at state.mn.us is an email that you can email if you have questions about how to navigate it or anything specific. But the speakers that we have today, um, we have someone from Highway Heavy Trans Training, Construction Training, sorry, Highway Heavy Construction Training, um, Department of Transportation, and Department of Natural Resources. So I just want to get right into it. And now I am pleased to welcome Sylvia Garcia, who's going to tell us more about the highway heavy construction training. Thank you. Welcome, Sylvia. Oh, thank you, Liz, for having me. And uh, thank you and greetings to all. Um, 
I'm Sylvia Garcia, and I am the special project coordinator for this really unique special training opportunity for you. It is called the MnDOT Deed Highway Heavy Construction Training and Job Placement. Um, if you imagine yourself in a high paying construction career in a career pathway, um, seasonal job uh, working with uh, uh, different opportunities to be able to hire with different trades. Imagine a structure has been built. It usually takes over 20 trades of, of um, organizations to build that particular structure. Uh, today, we are in the process um, of recruiting in terms of uh, for the horizontal, as you can say, highway heavy construction for the metro and statewide. Um, so to be eligible, so how are you eligible? As you can see on the page here, it identifies a member of an ethnic minority group and or a woman have a high school. I think I lost the, the, the screen there, Liz. And I'll continue talking about it. Um, eligibility really important. Um, have a high school or GD have a valid driver's license, and of course, to get to your work site, you must have a working vehicle, a car, and uh, active insurance for your automobile insurance. And once we are able to receive your application um, and we do the program interview and assessment, uh, we invite you to take, uh, it's called the Training Aptitude Assessment. It's a, we call it the TAA. It's a high school, low high school level, uh, two parts of the assessment is written, um, paper, no computer needed. Um, we do it on site at my St. Paul War Career Force Center. And then uh, it consists of soft communication skills or basically uh, basic uh, communication skills, uh, spelling, uh, grammar, et cetera. And the second part is math very basic uh, math high school level again um, it could be fractions or it will be fractions uh, percentage ratios uh, measurements uh, word problems um, again high school level and uh, when that is received um, our hope is that you will be able to do at least 70 percent uh, passing but we can always work with you um, what the two trainings that we're working with this year, um, taking application application as of this week is highway heavy construction training in high in uh, labor cement masons, and that's going to be taken in New Brighton. Um, that's going to start in April 15th for five weeks, daily Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. The second training will be in Hinkley, Minnesota. Local 49, and that's going to be mid May for up to three weeks. And uh, definitely, we're going to talk more details. If you're interested, please apply and we can uh, start the, the process. How do you apply? Here you go. Um, very simple. You can see the QR code, or and it'll take you directly to our Career Force section, and it will give you all the great information you need to know. And I like to end it with a quick story here. This gentleman through the pandemic, our class, um, this previous spring in 2021, um, you can read his story at your own uh, convenience, but he was one of our uh, stars, all were stars in our training program in that cement Mason's location. And him in particular, um, he was uh, hit with layoffs and was not able to secure another job. His background was maintenance. And um, he put his heart and soul into this. And you can see his, his story here. But at the end of the program, even before the end of the program, he was uh, recruited to work at one of the local um, companies and um, very successful. And, and like I said, he's one of the cheerleaders right now of our program because he felt that it was a worthwhile program. He did not have to pay um, anything other than his time and his commitment. So I encourage you, please, um, if you're interested or want to hear more, 
please get a hold of me, Sylvia at 651-531-5394122 or my email, or please uh, take a picture of the QR or download it and it'll take you directly to our career course section. Thank you, hope to hear from you. Thank you, Sylvia. Uh, there was one question that said, um, why ethnic minorities and or women for this program? You know, and I know the construction trades have typically hired white men, or at least they were the ones who went into that. Um, is there more to to this program? Well, this is uh, a good question, of course. Um, this has been in existence for over 12 years. This is federal funded through the Department of Transportation, through the office and the Division of Civil of Office. Um, and so th this particular program is geared um, for a demographic population that, that have been underserved in the past. Uh, there are many programs out there that are available throughout the metro and statewide with nonprofit organizations and other organizations that you probably will be able to have access to some of the programs similar to this one. Okay, and then to get the training schedule uh, for the new Brighton, um, is that on the Career Force link? Um, no, it uh, mentioned that uh, it starts in the spring. The dates are very uh, specific. Uh, we just finalized a few weeks ago the dates. Um, uh, it's so technical and complex that we strategize to execute this typical training in the spring because then you are more marketable to be hired when the construction season starts. I like for the individuals to call me so that we can start the conversation as why you're interested in this program and then all the details are released. And like I said, mid-April, five weeks, Monday through Friday, the first uh, labor cement masons will start mid-April uh, for up to three weeks will be the Highway Heavy Equipment Engineer training in Hinkley, Minnesota. Okay, good. Yeah, so definitely everyone, um, please reach out to Sylvia if if you know someone who's interested or you yourself is interested. And Sylvia, are you able to put your email address into the chat? I certainly can't, and um, I'll do that right now, not a problem. Great. Well, thank you very much for being here and giving a, us a glimpse of this program. Please, um, I'm available. Give me a call and we can start talking about this excellent opportunity. Good, thank, thank you. you. Department of Transportation is one of the larger agencies within the whole state of Minnesota system. And there are jobs available in every single region. Um, and, you know, I do want to dispel the myth too that it's only road work or only a snowplow driving. There really is a range of opportunities within the Department of Transportation. So here to tell us more today is Christine Fisher, um, one of the human resources department representatives from the Department of Transportation. So Christine, hello. Hello, thank you very much for introducing me and thank you for all your help, Liz. Um, I am Christine Fisher and I'm a recruiter with MnDOT. This is a picture of our central office. It's located in downtown St. Paul near the Capitol, but we do have 52 truck stations located statewide throughout Minnesota and over 20 district office locations located throughout the state as well. Next slide. This is Chang Yang who works in our administration office and uh, he is, we've got a quote here on what drives him and that's kind of our, um, our logo, if you will, what drives you? And he likes helping um, MnDOT employees make their jobs easier and faster. And uh, don't we all? So we uh, like working with Chang. Next slide. You know what, I, I just want to interrupt. A um, few people sure. have emailed me that they can't see the slides. Uh, Christine, can you see them? I can. 
Okay. Okay. Um, just if anyone else is having that problem, um, just know that these will be, you know, the recording will be there and we'll have it on our website tomorrow. And I can also email out the PowerPoint um, for people who request it. Sorry to interrupt you, Christine. Oh, no problem. Um, next slide, please. Here is our MnDOT website. And if you want to take a deeper dive on any of these um, items, such as students, if you are a new graduate, if you are an entry level or more experienced professional, you would click that tab and explore that career path. And then our maintenance workers and technicians. And then my contact information is underneath the contact tab as well. Next slide, please. Here are the job classifications that are projected for the greatest number of retirements at MnDOT. In 2021, there were projected to be 141 retirements. If you could click one more time, Liz. Um, in total over these 14 job classes. So there will be a lot of upcoming opportunities um, with MnDOT. Next slide, please. There are a variety of career paths and we try to bring folks in early. Our Phoenix Student Worker Program targets high school uh, students. Our Civil Engineering Student Worker Program targets four-year baccalaureate students in civil or construction engineering. Our SEED Student Worker Program targets the non-engineering uh, programs that we need for either a two-year civil tech program or a four-year degree. Our MINRO program, retention of our workforce, ROW, is we try to take student workers and transition them into professional jobs. And then, of course, we hire graduate-level engineers, meaning when they get their four-year degree, we hire them as engineers and or land surveyors. And you can do a deeper dive on any of those programs at that website URL, www.dot, blah, blah, blah. Next slide. Here are a few of the student worker positions that we currently have available on the mn.gov slash career site. So you can head out there and apply apply to any of those if you are currently a student, a full-time student. Next slide. We also have a variety of other job classifications, accounting, administrative support. I'll go into some of these a little more. Building construction and maintenance, communications, electronics. I mentioned engineering and land surveying. We have architects, human resources, planners, and uh, other transportation classes. Next slide, please. Here is our Office and Administrative Specialist Series. So for those of you who have great typing skills, attention to detail, you can see um, the class series is progresses from the lowest level at the first office specialist all the way up to Office and Administrative Specialist Principal. The compensation is listed both our uh, can you move back both our both hourly and then the total number of MnDOT employees that we currently have in each of those job classes so that you kind of know what your odds are of obtaining a position. Next slide, please. Next slide. There are also a career path for supervisor in the administrative um, series, but currently we do not have any vacancies. Again, you can see there are much many fewer of these positions within MnDOT because as you go up the career ladder, it's like a pyramid rather than a funnel. Next slide. The state is really in need of trades workers and MnDOT currently has vacancies for heavy equipment mechanic, electricians, which we call our highway signal technicians out there 
fixing the signals along the interstate. Um, the electrician lead is another vacancy, but it's not with MnDOT. And plumber master in charge and carpenter, we currently have vacancies for now. And you can see we need a lot of heavy equipment mechanics. We have 148 of those. So um, there are a great many opportunities for you. Next slide, please. Here are some of the current openings, um, as mentioned previously, and we're going to go over some of those duties as well. Next slide. This is our transportation specialist series. It goes from the low of transportation associate to transportation generalist, then transportation generalist senior up to transportation specialist. If you'd like to do a deeper dive, all I have time for today is just a few words about what the jobs entail, but I'm going to try to give you kind of a brief overview of that, but you can take a deeper dive at the URL listed, the www.state.mn.us, etc. Thank you. Um, next slide. Here is that career ladder. Um, MnDOT is an engineering firm. This is the transportation specialist series. It is our paraprofessional or technician series comprised of 2,200 employees or most of the MnDOT workforce. The snowplow operators fall into this series generally at the transportation generalist level and you can see the requirements that we have for these folks. Generally, you have to have a CDL and that's a commercial driver's license, either a class A or B, and more experience as you progress up the ladder, the career ladder. A civil technician degree will substitute for one year of experience. Next slide. There's also a supervisory level associated with this series, and it's called our Transportation Operations Supervisor. Again, you can see the numbers that we have of each of those. So there's a great career ladder, and you can see it's a great, um, well-paying job. The tosses typically supervise snowplow operators, bridge workers, or the heavy equipment mechanics. Next slide. If you're not interested in becoming a supervisor of those folks, you can choose a career as a technician. Um, and this paraprofessional engineering series is called Engineering Specialist. And this is the career ladder for expert and advanced level technicians. And again, a very competitive wage and there's quite a number of positions. We do have the current district engineer in our metro district worked his way up from snowplow operator to civil engineer to the district highway engineer, which is the top job within our metro district. So there's a lot of opportunity to move around and move up within MnDOT. Uh, next slide, please. Again, we also have professional engineers and land surveyors. And this is just the beginning of our career ladder. I did not include the supervisory and managerial positions on this slide, but there are a lot of them out there. So if you have a degree in either civil engineering, construction engineering, or land surveying, reach out, give me a call, I'll tell you how to apply. And what do um, engineers, technicians, and paraprofessionals do? Well, I'm gonna tell you. Next slide. One of the things they do is uh, conduct bridge inspections because MnDOT is responsible for inspecting bridges and recording maintenance needs. And that piece of equipment you see is a bridge snooper that brings them under the bridge. Next slide. This is uh, MnDOT engaged in repairing bridges by doing carpentry, structural steel, and you see them here doing the concrete work on a bridge. Next slide, please. Here is um, 
MnDOT overseeing construction of Interstate 35W, and they oversee the construction and maintenance of new and existing roads and bridges. Next slide. Design. MnDOT designs roads and bridges using a CAD or computer-aided design. I'm told we use one of the best um, products out there for CAD, which is MicroStation software. And you can see an example of that um, in the slide. Next slide. Fracture critical bridge inspection. There are specialized bridge inspection crews, and this one um, is inspecting a fracture critical bridge, meaning it doesn't have any redundancy, um, and so you need to pay more in attention to this bridge because there isn't a secondary feature <clears throat> that would help to maintain the bridge if something went wrong. Again, that's the bridge snooper that they go out in. Um, the hydraulics, that's fine. Thank you. Um, MnDOT employees also plan for how water will run under or near roads and bridges. One way they do this is by planning and installing culverts, and you see that here. Next slide. MnDOT employees test construction materials to meet design, maintenance, or research specifications, and Oh, um, did we advance two slides? Okay, thank you. Um, and they use specialized equipment such as you see here. Para-engineering temporary jobs are available for materials testing in the metro area for our construction season. They do have benefits and they come with holiday pay and they're good through um, not, uh, probably April through October you, is where you'd be working. Next slide. The permit area. MnDOT employees permit other utilities in our right-of-way, such as for electrical, telecommunications, or if somebody wanted to put a sign in to advertise on our right-of-way. Next slide. MnDOT employees engage the public and other government entities to conduct long and short-range planning and to develop documentation for a variety of different modes, not just for freeways. We do that for airports, transit, rail, um, et cetera. Next slide. Pre-design. MnDOT employees lay out profiles in pre-design so that the public and government entity can review different options for roadways and bridges. Next slide. The right-of-way. MnDOT employees must often purchase additional land in order to facilitate a road or bridge project. Land surveyors make sure that the exchange of land is accurately recorded. Next slide. Now here's one that everyone's probably familiar with, our road maintenance area. You can see these employees engaged in doing roads resurfacing in the summer. Doesn't the summer look nice? Next slide. Signs. MnDOT designs, installs, and or replaces signs as you can see on the slide, or we oversee contractors who do that function. Next. Another task that you're probably familiar with us is our snowplow operations. Currently, we have night vacancies for people who have a commercial driver's license and one year of heavy equipment or commercial vehicle experience and a good driving record. Next slide. We have MnDOT employees who drill very deep or take soil and water samples to ensure that we can put a bridge or road surface in a certain location. Next slide. Surveys are done by MnDOT employees. Sometimes they're in muddy areas like this picture uh, illustrates to make sure that we can put a road or bridge or other such as a sign or a highway signal in the correct location. Next slide. 
traffic engineering. Our traffic engineers and technicians set speed limits on the interstates, develop lighting plans, signing plans, signaling plans, and make sure that the pavement will be marked accurately. Next slide. Here are some current openings in those series. So head out to mn.gov slash careers if you're interested in those vacancies. Next slide. Again, I'm just reiterating that we're more than just engineers. We currently have vacancies where you see the asterisks. So accounting, auditing, HR, student workers, planners, the state program administrator series as well. What do you look for when you are, um, can you back up one slide please? What do you look for? Technician, if you have a two year degree, technician classes may be for you. If you have a four year degree or a lot of professional experience, a level one may be appropriate for you or a level two position. So look for the numbers. And then if you have a significant amount of professional experience, you may want to apply for a supervisory position and look for those. Next slide. And here is the website. You want to go to mn.gov slash careers and you can see on the far left the external applicants with the red bar pointing to search for jobs now. So that's where you head to and click there. What would you analyze on a job posting? Specifically, make sure that you read and follow the instructions. I think it's good to um, either print the job posting or save it somewhere where you can look at it again, especially if you get an interview. It's good to look that over. Um, two, you want to look at the minimum qualifications. In this case, they're a bachelor's degree or one year of experience that emphasizes analysis. Do you meet those minimum qualifications? If you don't, I would not apply. But if you do, make sure that you list your bachelor's degree on your resume so that you do receive credit for that. And then um, if you look at this, applicants who meet the above requirements will be further evaluated based on all of these bulleted points. So make sure that you listed all of your skills on your resume that they're going to be evaluated on. Make sure that you review that and you can submit a different resume for each different vacancy that is listed. Also look at the preferred qualifications. At times we have a significant number of vacancies. The way that we winnow down that pool so we aren't interviewing hundreds of people is to look at the preferred qualifications. If someone has those, you're much more likely to receive an interview than if you do not. And I think that concludes my presentation. My contact information is there. You can call me and leave a voicemail. I do respond to those within one business day. Thank you. Thank you so much, Christine. Yeah, this is a lot of information, but it really was um, a very specific look at some of the job functions, especially in the transportation series. So um, please reach out everyone to Christine if you do have more questions about those, so thank you. Um, next, I'm happy to welcome Zai Tao and Matt Olinger from the Department of Natural Resources. Matt and Zai, welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. Thanks, Liz, and uh, very, uh, very good information, Christine. Um, one thing that, um, if you wanna go to the next slide right away, um, yeah, both both myself and Sai are both uh, part of the uh, Department of Natural Resources uh, within our uh, Human Resources Office. Um, much of the information that we have, um, you know, uh, the process and things like that is very similar to what Christine pointed out uh, in terms of going to the state of Minnesota's website, looking for 
specific positions within, uh, you know, maybe within the either Department of Transportation or Natural Resources. Um, it's it's the same process, and uh, the same would hold true when you're looking at job postings, looking at minimum qualifications, things like that. We we run a very consistent process within the uh, state of Minnesota. So, um, if you want to, yep, thank you. Um, so what I wanted to do. Um, I'm not going to dive really deep into all of the different uh, positions and our classifications that the DNR has. Um, specifically, what I thought I would focus on are um, are the varied locations. Um, number one that the DNR has um, the Department of Natural Resources is, of course, responsible for the natural resources of the entire state of Minnesota. And because of that, a lot of our positions are located where those resources are. And as you can see from the map on the right, um, I know it's really hard to see, but you can see little dots. Um, all of those little dots are actual work locations that we have within the state of Minnesota. So as stated here, we've got over 300 report to work sites um, within the state. Some of those uh, vary. Um, for example, our central office, um, which is where uh, most of the administrative type positions are, uh, is located here in, in St. Paul on, on uh, Lafayette uh, Boulevard. Um, if from there, we sort of spread out into regional offices and that the colors of the map. So if you see in the uh, Northwest is sort of gray, we've got a regional office there that's in Bemidji. Uh, in the Northeast, our regional office is in Grand Rapids. In the Southwest, it's in New Ulm, Minnesota. And then, um, in the uh, southeast, it's it's actually a separate office that is also within uh, uh, the city limits of St. Paul, Minnesota, off of Warner Road. Those regional offices also hold um, <clears throat> generally anywhere from um, uh, one to two hundred uh, employees at each of those offices. From there, it breaks down into area offices, um, uh, where uh, it it gets a little bit out. Um, out into the natural resources a little bit uh, further. Um, and those offices really vary. They vary quite widely. We have some offices out in the areas that house, you know, 50 employees. And we, we actually have uh, work locations in areas that house one or two employees. Um, it really does vary. Um, and then, of course, we also have all of our state park locations that are scattered across the uh, state of Minnesota. So if you want to go to the next slide. Uh, one of the things that I thought I would focus on today is just because of the timing of this and the timing of um, of sort of our hiring um, uh, um, process, and um, it really is seasonality. Um, we are in the process of posting a lot of seasonal positions. Um, we are just starting that process right now. We've gotten a few requests, mostly at this point from our Parks and Trails Division, um, to start posting for things like building and grounds workers, labor generals, labor trades and equipment. Um, those all of those individuals do, um, you know, maintenance, whether it's maintenance on buildings, grounds, some of them do um, maintenance on trails, um, things like that. We've also got parks and trails associates who help. That's a lot of customer service skills where you're at a park helping park visitors, um, greeting them, taking money for their camping stay, maybe or their park permits. Um, we even have uh, food service service workers. Um, a lot of people don't realize it, but we have at our Itasca State Park, we actually have a restaurant um, at our uh, at that park that employs food service workers. One of the other big uh, seasonal type positions that we are uh, oftentimes hiring for this time of year are the the official title is called a law compliance rep. That's what you will see when you look for job postings. Um, but what they are, are watercraft inspectors. So those are the the individuals that go out to each of the uh, uh, public water accesses and connect with the boaters that are there, either launching or taking off their water uh, equipment, uh, boats, jet skis, those sorts of things. Um, and really, what they're there that they're there to to educate the public on invasive species. So they're taking a look at their uh, watercraft that they're bringing on or taking off, making sure that there are no zebra mussels attached to it, but also um, primarily informing the public about how they what they can do to stop the spread of those invasive species. Um, the other last big one is uh, wildland firefighting positions. 
Um, the DNR is responsible um, statutorily to uh, protect uh, protect the state when it comes to wildland fires. Um, and so uh, it, last year was a really busy year with us. Um, there were a lot of fires uh, throughout the state of Minnesota. We also, um, once people are trained, we have opportunities where we send people to uh, out of state fires as well. So if there's big fires in California, Colorado, we will oftentimes send send our wildland firefighters out there to help them out, and they will do the same for us if we get a fire that's uh, that's quite large. Um, and if you want to go to the next slide, the other thing that I thought that would be important is to point out the fact too that we 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 are the Department of Natural Resources. Many many of our positions are sort of scientific positions. Um, within each division, they're most of the time called, you know, like a natural resources specialist, fish and wildlife. They focus on either fisheries or wildlife, whether it's deer, bear, um, those sorts of things. We've got hydrologists. We've got uh, we have engineers as well. Um, so we do have a lot of those positions. But I always point out the fact that we also have, you know, sort of administrative positions within our agency. All state agencies do. So we also have positions like office and administrative specialists. We've got accountants. We've got human resources. We've got positions in diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, we do a lot with real estate, um, real estate transactions, whether we're buying land, selling land, dealing with uh, utility easements on land. We've got a whole real estate uh, division. Um, we also have mechanics because our agency, like MnDOT, we have a lot of equipment that people use. Uh, and in order to maintain and keep that equipment up, we've got to have mechanics to do that. The two things that I would point out here too, um, you know, if you're somebody who is is going to school for a four year program, I would uh, encourage you to check out our internships. Um, we oftentimes uh, will post those. Um, they, they won't be posted again until next year. They, they usually go out in, in December um, of each year. Um, and they, those internships run during the summer. The other one that I wanted to point out here is our conservation officers. A lot of times when people think of the DNR, they think of either parks and trails or conservation officers. Um, our conservation officers are licensed peace officers. Um, we actually will be um, starting the process to hire more conservation officers um, I've been told within the next couple of weeks here. And uh, what I wanted to point out quickly, I've got a couple minutes, is that we we actually run two tracks for our conservation officers. One is the is you know sort of a traditional track where you've got somebody who has gone to school for law enforcement and they get their license um, or their credentials in order to get their license while going to school. Um, a few years ago, uh, we decided to take a different track, and we call that the CO Prep program. That counts. Uh, that stands for Conservation Officer Prep Academy. And uh, for those individuals, it's sort of a non-traditional. What we do is we uh, we advertise that if you are somebody who has a two or four year degree in something other than law enforcement. Um, and if you're interested in becoming a conservation officer, you apply for those positions. We will actually pay you to go to school to obtain the necessary uh, certifications that are needed to become a licensed peace officer. Um, so we we pay for the schooling. We pay you um, a livable wage while you're in that program. The program itself lasts a few weeks. And then um, eventually you come, uh, once you're done with that program, you go into the academy with uh, with other conservation officers and learn what it's like to become a conservation officer with the Department of Natural Resources. So I wanted to point that out because again, it's, it's sort of a non-traditional track that we have going on and it does open here uh, very soon. So take a look at that. Um, and again, this this slide is just like others. You can apply. Um, we do also keep all of our job postings up to date on our um, on the DNR's website. But of course, you can find those on um, MMB's website as well. Minnesota Management Budget, that is. So, um, and if on the next slide, we've got um, just a size contact information is email address. Um, Mine is matt.olinger at state.mn.us too, if you have, if you wanted to get in touch with me. So I appreciate the time um, that you've all taken to uh, listen to us. 
Thank you, Matt. Um, everyone, I posted the the DNR Careers page link in the chat. And so we encourage you all to go through there. Um, you know, Matt, honestly, it does sound really appealing to go up to Lake Itasca for the summer and work in the kitchen and enjoy the outside. Do you ever have, um, you know, perhaps older people, you know, I'd say older in quotation marks over 50 or 60 that take advantage of those opportunities? Absolutely. We do. Um, I too. I mean, I sometimes wish my permanent work location was one of the state parks because uh, how nice would it be to go out on lunch and go walk on the trails? Um, but yeah, absolutely. We've got a lot of people who are, you know, sort of traditionally retired. They've gone through, uh, uh, they've, they've made it so far in the, whatever their career was and they've retired and maybe they, uh, um, you know, they might spend the winters down in Florida and they come back to the Minnesota during the summers and it's a great part time job for for people like that. We also hire a lot of teachers, um, things like that. Teachers are often off during the months that we really need people. So, yeah, absolutely. How does it work even like for college students who might need to go back to college yeah. August 30th? Yeah, we're we're relatively flexible um, in the job posting. You will see for seasonal positions that it will tell you generally what the season is. But we oftentimes, you know, there can be some flexibility there. You work. What I would say is you work with the supervisor um, and say, you know, gosh, I'd really like this position, but I've got this other commitment that I need to go to in September or October, whatever it is. Is there any way that I can be laid off earlier than what was anticipated? And depending on the business need, um, <clears throat> that can definitely happen. Our seasonal positions are, they are permanent. They're classified permanent positions. The idea is, is that, you know, that you come back year after year. So you will, you would be sent a seasonal um, recall letter and then a seasonal layoff letter when your um, season is done. But the idea is that you come back each year. Okay. Hopefully. Yeah, that's good to know. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, Matt, you had told me at another time too that you assist the yeah. Board of Water and Soil Resources. Can you tell me a little bit more about these open positions? Yeah, um, the Minnesota Board of Water and Soil Resources. We do. Um, we also do their um, human resources work. Um, and so, uh, you know, like us, that most of their positions are are somewhat scientific. Their work is mostly um, consultative with other with county board and water soil uh, boards. Um, and so they, you know, like the ecological science conservationist, um, that's a, you know, a fairly scientific position that they've got that's in consultation with those county level positions. Um, and of course they too, you know, they have, you'll see it, the account clerk here. <laughs> they too also have the administrative type positions that uh, most other agencies have as well. Yeah, and those were all of the positions that are on the state careers page today. So they're all still open. Good, thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Matt, for being here today and telling us a little bit more about DNR and some of the flexibility too with some of the positions. That's great to find out. Great, thank so, you. For everyone else, you know, you might thinking, oh, I don't want to be outside or whatever the case may be. Maybe you have an accounting background. Well, I took a look. I went on to um, state.mn slash careers and clicked on a job family of accounting auditing and financial and there are 29 open positions today so i put them on this screen just so you could see for instance um, all of the jobs throughout the state throughout the agencies so medic medicare biller with um, human services department accounting technician at department of employment and economic development various accounting roles within minnesota state college system in detroit lake st paul brooklyn park Account clerk again in Min State and Thief River Falls, local government auditor in the office of the state auditor in Marshall, in Mankato, and in Duluth. So those are three different positions. Investment analyst with the investment state board in St. Paul, and finance accounting supervisor, MMB in St. Paul. So again, you can see it's a range whether you have a two year degree in accounting 
or um, some customer service skills or whether you're at a, a senior leadership level. So um, just remember that you can sort that the, the careers page on any job family at any time. You know, another good practice is to follow um, the agencies that you've got your eye on on social media. I know Department of Transportation has a, a Facebook page. Uh, Department of Natural Resources has a Facebook page. So Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, these are all good places to see what else is going on in many of the state agencies. And oftentimes they will post, you know, now currently posted uh, for certain positions. So it's also just a, a great way to pay attention and be alerted the minute that something comes that you are interested in applying to. Career Force MN has um, job counselors all across the state who can help you with your resume or with interviewing. You can find an office closest to you, go to careerforcemn.com slash locations. And you can also send me an email or call 651-259-7500, which is our Career Force Information and Assistance Line. And we've got a great team on the call center there, and they'll connect you with whatever you need to, uh, wherever you live and whatever you need to talk with. So, hope that all of you can come back next week. Uh, next week, Department of Employment and Economic Development, DEED, my agency, the uh, Minnesota Pollution Control Agency, and Department of Corrections are all going to be joining us. Um, so, it will be on Tuesday, February 22nd, because Monday the 20, 21st is President's Day, and our offices will be closed. Also, please, uh, if you have a phone ready or you know with you right now that you can do this, um, follow the QR code and go to the online meet and chat link. You create a login and create a, a password, and then you follow the questions to create a profile, and then be ready on. February 28th, you can use your phone, it will op operate on a mobile device um, to chat. Many of these same recruiters will be there and uh, they'll be there to answer questions about their agencies or kind of help you figure out where you should be applying. Um, one question just came in next week is DEED, Pollution Control Agency and Department of Corrections. So, um, I'm Liz Jennings. I'm glad to have all of you here. I'm just going to look at the chat one more time. Um, someone says, "Does it have a, uh, is there a link instead? Yes, go to our Explore State Government Careers URL. I will just put that in the chat, and that will have the link that you can follow to get to the portal to sign create your meet and greet, your job fair portal. Um, will IT be at meet and chat? I cannot remember right now. I will look and if I don't see them, I will ask them to participate. Thank you again for all being here. I'll get this posted to our Explore Careers page by tomorrow morning. And let me know if you have any questions. Talk to you later.